A new GPU from a mystery startup claims that it's 10 times faster than the RTX 5090 and uses less power. Intel's next gen chips, well, they're looking delayed. And MSI's dropping upgraded RTX 5080 and 5070 Ti cards with better cooling and new designs. AMD's cooking up a Ryzen 9000 chip with 16 cores, 200 watts, and a ridiculous amount of cash. And quietly, AMD launched a new RX 9060 graphics card, but you probably can't even even buy it. You know the drill. Let's get into it. All right, guys, AMD just dropped a stealth GPU. This is the RX 9060, non-XT. And if you blinked, you probably missed it. Let's break it down because only certain people can buy this card. That's right. AMD announces the Radeon RX 9060. That's the non-XT. This is a eight gigabyte card. That's right. You got fewer cores than the 9060 XT. And also it is for a very specific buyer segment. And you might not be be part of it unless you like buying pre-builds. Now I just so happen to own a pre-built company. What do I think about this? Oh, we'll get into it. Hold on one second. Contrary to what was reported earlier, the RX 9060 is a cut down version of the 9060 XT. Both of these cards use the same Navi 44 GPU, but the non-XT variant clearly targets a lower performance tier, specifically at 1080p. Now this seems to me like this would be a card that is um, trying to compete. And I use that word very ironically, compete against the RTX 5050 from NVIDIA. Cut down version of the 9060 XT that you've got here. This is a 1080p card, obviously. The eight gigabytes of VRAM is a dead giveaway. The card has fewer GPU cores, 1792 stream processors, representing a reduction of 12.5%. Now, initially you kind of saw a leak of this card in the latest driver update. And that's where the new model was kind of announced. And then shortly thereafter, you saw this pop up on AMD's website. The company has confirmed that this model will not be available for the DIY market. Now that might be you. Are you the DIY market? I'll let you decide. Meaning that it may not be listed by all retailers. So essentially what this is, this is a quietly rolled out card for OEMs, for system integrators, things like that. For buyers that are building your own PC, this is basically a non-starter at this point. And in reality, even on the Nvidia side, the 5050 wasn't meant for you either. It was meant for system integrators, pre-built, things like that. That's what that card was meant for, my humble opinion. Now, does this mean that either of these cards from AMD or Nvidia are just absolute bangers that you should consider? Again, it really depends on what you're doing. If you're just a 1080p gamer and you're not interested in what the used market has to offer you, I mean, sure, maybe. But honestly, when they talk about this card being for pre-built system integrators, they're not talking about meta PCs. They're not talking about some of your um, higher tier boutique system builders. They're talking about, you know, the ones that move volume in Costco and Walmart. That's what they're talking about. We don't even stock or sell the RTX 5050 at, uh, at Meta PCs. It's because our, our buyers uh, are not particularly interested in them. The RX 9060 comes with eight gigs of GDDR6 memory, but as previously reported, it's been downclocked to 18 gigabit per second, matching the 9070 GRE. This results in around 10% lower bandwidth compared to the RX 9060 XT. In terms of performance, AMD shared 1080p ultra settings results. The 9060 XT is targeted at 1440p. So at least AMD was nice enough to share uh, some results from this upcoming card. The RX 9060, this is native 1080p Ultra. Uh, Assassin's Creed, 108 FPS, Black Ops 6, 98, Doom Eternal, 153. Just your standard 1080p performance. AMD initially shared incorrect specifications with board partners, which led to some RX 9060 XT cards being listed with 32 compute units and 20 gigabit per second memory. For example, the XFX Swift dual model listed in South Korea displayed these inaccurate specs, which have since been updated. So since you can't buy one of these on Newegg, I would expect to see them only in pre-built gaming rigs. DIY builders will likely never see this card on store shelves, although that may change, who knows. The Radeon RX 9060 is likely positioned to compete with the GeForce RTX 5050, a card that hasn't gained much traction at all among gamers due to its weak specs. Both models are primarily designed for system integrators. But like I said before, it's mostly the system integrators that sell at Costco, Walmart, Best Buy, things like that. So there it is, the new RX 9060 from AMD. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think about this new card in the comments down below. All right, listen up friends. Today's video is powered by the Meta PC's Night Reaper. This thing is shipping today. Every single panel sports its own custom print. So your rig looks as savage as it plays. Now inside you've got the brand new RTX 5080, Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and 64 gigs of DDR5 memory. Translation, triple digit frames and render times measured in blinks. This thing is cooled with a Meta 360 AIO. It's RGB drenched and it's got 
got tempered glass that lets the artwork pop. We pulled some crazy frames in Fortnite, Apex, and even in Cyberpunk on some wild settings. So hit metapcs.com, click the buy button, and use code ZACKNEWS to save. It leaves our Phoenix shop the very same day. Now these units vanish fast, so claim your Night Reaper before somebody else racks up the kill streak at metapcs.com and use code ZACKNEWS to save. And now, back to the news. A new Ryzen 9000 leak just hit 16 cores, 200 watts, and a mountain of cash. This one is built to flex. Let's check it out. That's right, AMD Ryzen 9000 CPU with a rumored 16 Zen 5 cores, 192 megabytes of L3 cache, and a 200 watt TDP. This was reportedly on the way. This thing's a cooking. Let's take a look. AMD is reportedly finally launching dual X3D CPU. So there's a two CPU leak in this bad boy. This is from Chilled Dog, who has uh, apparently a tight connection with motherboard manufacturers. And he is claiming that AMD is preparing to launch a Ryzen CPU based on the Zen 5 architecture with a higher TDP than current models and significantly larger L3 cache. And this is according to the leak, two models are planned. So two models coming out of this bad boy. Granite Ridge architecture, Zen 5 featuring increased cache. The eight core version, 120 watt TDP, 96 megabytes of L3 cache. This configuration matches that of the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, suggesting it could be a lower tier variant. Maybe, what are we calling this thing? A 9700X 3D maybe? which AMD typically releases later. And now let's talk about the 16 core version because this 16 core version of the chip would be the first mainstream Zen 5 chip at this particular power level. So let's dig into that. That's maybe even the more interesting skew here, potentially. More attention is on the 16 core version reportedly featuring a 200 watt TDP, which is 30 watts higher than both the 9950X and the 9950X 3D, which is the processor that I'm using in my build today. Importantly, it allegedly includes 192 megabytes of L3 cache, indicating a dual CCD layout each with 32 megabytes standard cache, 64 megabytes of 3D cache. Now, reading between the lines, this suggests AMD may have decided or is still evaluating, there's been a lot of speculation on this, the possibility of launching its first desktop Ryzen CPU with dual 3D cache dies. AMD previously stated that such configurations are expensive to produce, which is why they haven't been released before. The cache figure alone is pretty cool. That's gonna help with your heavy multi-threaded workloads more than raw clock speed probably ever could. The current top model combines one CCD with 3D cache and one one without requiring users to toggle between gaming and non-gaming modes, effectively disabling one chiplet during certain workloads. So dual 3D vCache dies might be a thing. That's kind of interesting. And you can see a breakdown of the current Ryzen 9000 lineup, including these two new potential upcoming SKUs and their reported leaked specs. Check it out. Let's see what the comments are saying down below. I'll give you guys some time to formulate your own thoughts and leave them in the comments on this video. While you're there, make sure you hit subscribe and throw a like on the video. This is what the 9950 the X3D should have been. Interesting. My prediction for gaming, it'll perform exactly like the 9800X3D and 9950X3D. They're the same. I'd be more interested in the benchmarks on this thing. Okay, AMD, I'm interested. You have my attention. And check this out. This is pretty much what everybody's thinking. I don't see the point when Ryzen is so far ahead already. Sometimes it's good to kick the horse while it's down, just to be sure. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about Intel and some of their woes that they are having a little bit later in the show today. So stick around for that. I've got a whole bunch to talk about. Let me know what you guys think about these two Two new leaked SKUs from AMD in the comments down below. MSI's new expert cards for the RTX 5080 and 5070 Ti are here. They're beefed up. You got some beefed up cooling, also new design and potentially some big overclocking potential. Let's take a peek. Here come the expert series models. Check it out. MSI formally introduces the RTX 5080 and 5070 Ti expert graphics cards. That's right. Look at this bad boy. That's the cheese grater supreme. We love that. I mean, it's kind of like a founder's card in a way in a lot of the appearance, but it is uh, been rounded out a little bit more and obviously has that beautiful cheese grater on it as well. Dual purpose, we'd love to see that. MSI has officially launched two new graphics cards in its premium expert series, the 5080 16 gigabyte expert and the newly confirmed 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte expert. Previously showcased a Computex with only the 5080 model in focus, but rest assured there's hardly any difference between the cards, at least in terms of the design. Now I would imagine on these cards, and I'm also starting to see a lot of this pop up on Reddit as well, great improvements. A lot of people really liking the designs, but I'm very curious about how easy these cards will be to find when they land and when they do land, what sort of premium they're going to carry. I can just, I can only imagine, but I guess time will tell. The Expert Series continues to stand apart from traditional gaming designs by avoiding ARGB lighting. Boy, we love to see that from time to time, don't we? Instead, it offers a sleek golden black dual tone aluminum shroud with a push-pull airflow configuration aimed at creators, professionals, and users who value thermal performance and subtle aesthetics. MSI's Flow Frozer 2 system is a new cooler design, which combines vapor chamber and new Stormforce fans. 
So they've really upped the ante on design and thermal performance uh, on this particular card, but you know, depending on uh, how scarce it is and the markup on it, get this card. The RTX 5080 Expert OC is MSI's flagship model based on NVIDIA's Blackwell GPU, and it supports a 360 watt TDP, 16 pin power connector, just a single one of those bad boys. Meanwhile, the 5070 Ti Expert, same design and cooling, but targets users looking for a more efficient and still capable Blackwell GPU setup. MSI confirms both SKUs have the same size and weight, so it's purely just a spec difference on the GPU side. No pricing, no release date yet. Let me know what you guys think about these cards in the comments down below. Expandable memory on a graphics card. Boy, I'm having flashbacks. I swear we just talked about this in an earlier video. And if you missed it, it's probably because you're not subscribed. Check this out. A startup says its new Zeus GPU is 10 times faster than the RTX 5090. And it sips power like it's uh, like it's running on a battery. I have some questions on this one. Let's check it out. There's been a lot of chatter about the Bolt graphics cards. Well, they just released a little bit of an update. It's almost like they've seen a whole bunch of chatter about expandable memory on GPUs. Ooh, check that out. Interesting timing. Bolt Graphics Zeus GPU makes bold claim of outperforming NVIDIA's RTX 5090. What? By 10 times in rendering workloads. And it's also using laptop grade memory. So many questions here. Let's dig into this and see what's going on. Bolt Graphics has made a surprise debut in the GPU market with its Zeus GPU, which will employ laptop memory and give current gen options no chance of standing in competition. That is a bold claim. And uh, debut in the GPU market, would that mean that it has actually debuted though? As far as I can tell, you know what? Let's go to their site. There's a debut. Let's see what's debuting. Beer Stein, short sleeve shirt, a hat, and a coffee mug. That's one hell of a debut. All right, back to the uh, back to the uh, debuted graphics card. If it becomes reality, Zeus GPU will be the first current gen GPU to offer expandable memory, which is kind of cool. We've talked about this. This is fun. No hate there. I think it's a cool concept. Well, when it comes to competing with mainstream GPUs, a lot of startups have come up with bold claims, bringing new innovations and different features, but we haven't really seen an actual market feasible solution coming from them. However, bold graphics, things might take a new turn in the GPU segment as a startup pledges to bring their Zeus GPU to the industry by 2027 and the performance and specifications revealed to us by the firm are both shocking and amazing at the same time. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff here you need to dig into. The power consumption is one of them. This is Bolt showcasing a solution that allows consumers to ramp up memory capacity. According to the firm, Zeus GPU can be equipped with a whopping 384 gigs of memory, but the actual twist is using DDR5 sodium slots rather than the traditional GDDR options. The GPU will be equipped with two times or four times slots depending upon the configuration chosen by consumers. Now this is where things get interesting, where we cast a little bit of, not doubt, but maybe some questions on the card that would be interesting to find out the answers to. Something doesn't add up to Bolt's graph announcement. Based on the on-paper specs, you're looking at a massive TDP rating, but the manufacturer claims that the GPU will be powered by a single, am I saying that right? Eight pin PCIe power connector, which could bring in around 120 watts to the main board. So there's confusion on how the company plans to run such components on board with limited power, which leads us to believe that either the announcement is a PR stunt or the company has made a breakthrough that even Nvidia and AMD managed to leave out. You would think with a breakthrough like this, uh, the very first move from a company like Nvidia, especially, would be to buy them out. Maybe that's what they're going for here. I mean, just look at the gains here on path tracing alone. You have the 50, it's claiming 10 times on this particular Zeus card performance on path tracing versus a 5090. Let's dig into some of those numbers and see what they mean. Speaking of performance claims in pre-silicon benchmarks, which are basically hypothetical numbers, the Zeus GPU is claimed to outperform the 5090 in rendering workloads by tenfold and that too under full quality 4K path trace graphics. While the performance numbers are optimistic, such a massive leap does seem a bit skeptical, but another thing that's pretty weird is having an RJ45 port on a GPU. Well, and I think the reason for that is stacking graphics cards. And we saw Bolt kind of mention this card in the past. I think it's been several months now when they first started talking about it, if not a year or more, with the RJ45 allowing cards to link together. So I'm not like totally surprised by that necessarily when it comes to compute workloads and various workstation tasks. So, I mean, this sounds pretty revolutionary on paper, right? But without supporting drivers, real benchmarks and things like that, it's pretty narrowly tuned for niche use, I would imagine is what this card is meant for. It's impressive in some of the render tests, but obviously this isn't gonna be your gaming card. And until driver layers API support and we get some real sampling and that arrives, it's an uh, intriguing concept for sure. And we're praying for an NVIDIA killer, right? We don't wanna count these guys out necessarily, but very interesting claims being made would love to see what that ends up turning into in the future. And really, it seems like the card and the architecture is meant more for specialized workloads, right? Highly specialized workloads. But, you know, for mainstream gaming, things like that, this ain't that card. And boy, that's some modest power draw, man. 120 watts for the base model. Let's dig into the 
the comments, I bet that this is just gonna be interesting. I've already looked at some stuff on Reddit. A lot of people are quick to call it out. Path tracing numbers, yes, they look wild, but actual gaming performance, obviously worse than a 5080, which makes sense. Again, this is not a gaming card. That's not what they're going for. But some interesting technology that they've come up with here. Let's read the comments now because I'm sure there's some interesting stuff down here. And I'm sure you guys have some interesting thoughts as well that you could leave in the comments on this video down below. Let's check out what people are saying. I like expandable VRAM. Best of luck to the company. I, I agree. I think that's great. And uh, this is kind of what everyone is thinking, I would imagine at this point. If this was even remotely real, AMD or NVIDIA would have bought it. Maybe, you never know. If it's not overpriced, I would love this for an AI rig. That's what it's meant for. And then you have some folks who have dug a little bit more into this company saying, it, maybe this is a Jensen wannabe. I see a patent filed. I don't know if it was approved. CEO's background is not too obvious, aimed at being a pro-tech executive and something about a designing cloud and HPC systems, but for who? So some interesting kind of backstory on this company. Would love to actually learn more about the company itself and see what their plans are are longer term. Naysayer in the comments here, check this out. There's vaporware marketing BS, then there's these guys. It's a whole other level of BS. Hell, another universe of BS. Look, contrarian in there, I don't know. You know how expensive it is to start up in Silicon Valley? They got money from somebody somewhere, maybe even some IP to go with it. It would be interesting to see who. So a lot of people asking for not just more information on the card itself, but the background on Bolt, who's running it, and uh, what their plans are. So that would be kind of an interesting thing if you're Bolt and you're trying to get people behind this new card and new technology, maybe some more information on the company itself would be helpful for folks to really get behind it and rally. This is true too. Too bad it's aimed at AI garbage. We need gaming GPUs without the upscaling GIMPs. I doubt it. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. There are a few cool ideas and some weird ones too, but from the render to reality, there's a big difference. Very true. Let me know your predictions on Bolt, this new GPU lineup that they're working on in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Man, Intel, they are struggling right now. Intel's next gen Panther Lake CPUs may be in trouble. You've got delays, you have validation issues, and a lot of, uh, of radio silence from Team Blue. Also, their credit rating got downgraded as well. I'm gonna dig into that too, but first, let's check this out. Intel is reportedly struggling with its next gen Panther Lake chips as the 18A yield rates are making it difficult to scale production for retail launch. Now, these delays are pushing a lot of timelines back well into 2026, and uh, it, which really is just gonna end up widening AMD's lead in desktop and, uh, and even GPU segments when compared to Intel. It seems like Intel's high-end CPU chip ambitions are now at a stall. According to a new report, it's claimed that Panther Lake production is facing difficulties. Let's see what difficulties lie ahead. Intel's PTL chips are seeing three times too many defects, making rollout difficult by year end. Well, it seems like with every passing day, there are developments on Intel that are taking the markets by storm, and now it's reported that Panther Lake production is slacking. Reuters has disclosed that the first Intel 18A based product hasn't managed to reach the expectations of Intel when it comes to production volume as a small percentage of PTL chips being made are satisfactory for customers, mainly due to insufficient 18A yield rates and an overall slowed momentum of the foundry and CPU business. Panther Lake is expected to bring Intel back into business, but it seems like things are getting a little gloomy over at Intel. Speaking of gloomy, Intel's credit rating slashed to just two notches above junk status. I won't dig into this whole article, but the gist of it is this, credit rating downgraded, the only real thing going for Intel right now is they are sitting on a pile of cash that they could use, obviously, to come up with some new products that hopefully make some waves, and uh, they also need to reduce their debt a little bit, it looks like. Intel has a planned PTL launch for Q4 with volume eventually going up, moving into Q1 of next year, but as of now, supply chain sources report that there's a stall with Panther Lake's progress, mainly due to little yield rate advancements with 18A. More importantly, only 10% of PTL chips made by the 18A wafer are up to the specifications Intel wants them to be at, which indicates that chip defects are massive massive right now. It is said that Panther Lake chips have three times too many defects for HVM, and this is a concerning situation. And uh, people on Reddit and all over the internet saying basically, listen, Intel kind of feels like they're losing roadmap control and communication has been fairly weak as well, which doesn't help. So what happens with Panther Lake slipping? Well, I would imagine that it would grant AMD another year of absolute dominance in desktop performance, but uh, Intel right now really needs a rebound story, like bad. Let's stick into the comments. I'm sure everyone Everyone is really um, civil down here and just having a very uh, rousing debate. Any win AMD gets doesn't change your lives one bit. You're still losers. Here you go. Chill pill. It sums it up, doesn't it? I'm glad everyone's playing nice. That's good. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. That's gonna do it for today. If you're not subscribed, if you haven't left a comment and said what's up, please do it down below. It helps the channel to grow. Throw a like on the video if you get a second too. And as always, we will see you next time.